60 second forecast, maybe hit that snooze alarm just too much and you got to get going. <laughs> I think yes. Um, well, it is Taco Tuesday, so happy. Right, your forecast today, it's still going to be a hot one. Let's get your forecast here, close to look at the northwest where we've got, right now we've got thunderstorms that are sitting right along the South Carolina coast. Up with us on this Tuesday morning, I'm meteorologist Jen Carfag now. Hey, and I'm meteorologist Alex Wallace. Good news though is those storms moved out here, uh, out of the way here for the overnight. Do want to take a look outside though on the east coast and we'll start you off looking at a few locations here as we wait we can share them all right so let's get you started here quick look at your snapshot for the weather today we still have a lot of those pop-up summer thunderstorms that are going to happen in the south and east some of them dropping some really heavy rain if you get stuck under them oh boy you're out of luck here and staying dry because yesterday's storms are kind of like don't even bother with the umbrella <laughs> yeah, exactly right. it's almost useless yeah. exactly meanwhile the heat continues here for us northern plains 104 around Bismarck. It's just been a triple digit uh, July here for us in Bismarck. We don't seem to be stopping that anytime yeah. soon. Hey, maybe a moral victory in Dallas. 98? Uh, not 100, <laughs> but it's awfully close. Right. Chicago, though, we're in the 90s at 92. And we had a lot of smoke in the Northeast yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, so today here up in Maine, there's still an air quality alert for that. That's going to be one concern out there. Some showers and storms, another. West Coast, though, stays pretty quiet and dry. 81 in Seattle, L.A. right around 80 degrees. We had some of that rain activity there in Southern California. It uh, looks like that activity will be a little bit uh, minimized today. But Four Corners region, yet again, we'll see that risk for a few more of those showers and storms. All right, so we've got a gorgeous late. show you where we're dealing with any travel issues this morning, though. I mean, overall looking pretty good in the Northeast. Saw some patchy areas of fog this morning in parts of New England. That could be the case again for you. Boston, though, I mean, officially we're looking at a, a pretty quiet morning. Temperatures are going to be in the 80s. Warm, right? Humid uh, for a lot of us, especially back down through the mid-Atlantic. Harrisburg and York, Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia, Baltimore. We've got temperatures starting in the low to mid 80s this morning. If you're not there, you're going to quickly get there. Sunshine out there. It's just going to be, you know, sort of a late July, steamy, sultry kind of day. And especially in the south, you will feel that dew points are up. Charleston, your temps in the 80s, your dew points close to it, right? To the mid to upper 70s. We might have a couple of thunderstorms out here, some showers. Remember that old invest we were talking about yesterday? Mike Seidel was uh, was there on the coast. Um, we actually could see just because that circulation is now on shore, just sort of hanging out here. It'll be an influence for some scattered showers again today. Coastal areas of South Georgia and South Carolina. No big deal kind of stuff, but still, if you're at the beach, that's a big deal. I know. Um, and so we'll be watching for that today. We also have some morning showers possible, maybe in that Big Bend area of Florida, but otherwise dry to start. Temperatures are going to be in the mid 80s here and a quick look at your air travel concerns. None right now, Alex, but that's now. What about uh, as we get through the day? Yeah, that becomes the question right later on today. This came down so fast, the ground couldn't even soak it in. Um, and we are going to look at some of those kind of storms again today. Not this morning. We're doing really good out there. A lot of 60s for temperatures. Burlington, Binghamton, Buffalo, Pittsburgh. We're down to 61 degrees, and we are dry right now. But let me show you where we could see thunderstorms later today. Not all of us. In fact, Pennsylvania, I think most of the state should be dry. Temps hit the 90s. D.C., we're going to be in the mid-90s. Not going to get any of those showers or storms today. But up across New York, especially central and northern New York, we've got showers, some thunderstorms. Could see those downburst kind of situation winds like we saw yesterday. In fact, damaging winds is the main risk that we will see with thunderstorms across the area. Buffalo to Syracuse to Binghamton, right along the I-90 corridor. And even over towards Albany and the Capital District and Worcester, Boston, we all have the chance of some thunderstorms that could get a little feisty as we get through the afternoon with some rain showers continuing overnight. There, we actually see temperatures cool down, 50s and 60s. That's it. Um, overnight temperatures here will be uh, certainly, uh, relatively speaking, on the cooler side compared to where we'll be in D.C. in the mid-70s overnight. And that's actually where the rain might hang on boundary right in that area. Alex, well, what to wear forecast. We're going to take you into Bismarck, North Dakota, where it is going to be hot today. we got temperatures soaring pretty quickly out there. So we're going to 104. Oh, boy, it's going to be stifling weather-wise. Plus, the sun is shining. The wind may be a little bit of help from that 50-mile-per-hour winds. I was checking out some of the, the clothing shops up here, Uptown Boutique. I was finding a few things there on the website. Um, and you might want to take advantage today here with some shorts and flip-flops. If you're wearing pants, maybe like capris or something, you know, just a little airy because it is going to be hot outside today. Then we take you in to West Palm Beach where, you know, if you're in or out um, today, it's going to make a difference, right? Outside, it's going to be steamy. It's going to be sultry. We're going to have higher dew points. It's going to be really sticky out there. But, of course, inside, you're always dealing with air conditioning and trying to, to layer up, right? We have a chance of thunderstorms, too. So grab the umbrella before you head out today in West Palm Beach. Alex? 
All right. Yeah, so let's take a look into the south and east here. I just checked out the Tampa observation to see if there was still thunder happening at the airport and not officially at the moment, but in the area, you've got thunderstorms here and you've been in and out of it actually over the past couple of hours. So watching that stretch of coastline, we also some showers up here across low, the low country of South Carolina. That invest that we were watching yesterday, remember Mike Seidel was out at, at Fernandina Beach. We are still watching that. Now it's on shore. It's just hanging out right here and it's going to hang out here on the coast of Georgia and South Carolina for the next day or so. So it's going to be an influence in our weather for sure. It, you know, likely not developing, although there's a chance of it, especially if it gets back over the water. But really the concern is that it's going to keep you with a little extra chance of getting showers and thunderstorms. Elsewhere too, though, we have the pop-ups and we're going to see that in the Atlanta area yet again today. Yesterday, if you were in Lawrenceville or Swanee, you just got soaked with thunderstorms that just were not moving and also had a lot of vivid lightning. Just heard about that from our photographer, just how big the lightning bolts looked, right? Just really intense. Um, and we had that ongoing for um, more than an hour, actually. Like yesterday, though, once the sun sets, things should start to quiet down in a lot of the southeast. Temperatures, though, not really changing much overnight here. Like last night, we have a lot of 70s, and then tomorrow we're soaring again with a lot more 90s, even upper 90s. Look at Nashville, 97. It's going to be hot in the coming days, Alex. Yes. Where thunderstorms are going to fire up today. We actually have the risk in the northeast. So I know you had a few yesterday. There'll be a few more today. We could see severe weather. Watching for damaging winds as the main threat. Buffalo, back to Jamestown, Dunkirk, you know, spots that we often talk about. Lake effect snow? Nope, it is thunderstorms that we are going to be talking about for you today. Syracuse and Rochester, Binghamton, we've got thunderstorms in the forecast. And elsewhere, while it's not as likely that you'll see severe weather, it's possible. So heads up on storms that may fire up. To time things out for you, this morning you're fine, but by about lunchtime, storms start blasting in. This is just after lunchtime, 1 o'clock, storms blasting through Buffalo and western New York, right along the New New York State Thruway gets to Rochester about 2, 3 o'clock. Syracuse by 3 o'clock, they're in your direction. So things are moving along fast, right? And damaging winds are going to be the primary threat with that. But it's not the only thunderstorm that you'll get. So you have a chance continuing as you get into the evening and even into the overnight. A few more showers may linger. That could cause some airport delays. So watching the concerns for air travel delays, maybe some extra turbulence as well, just because we have all those storm clouds building, got a lot of rising air, moving air, right? And that does cause turbulence. So in or out of Buffalo today in Syracuse and Burlington, we may have some delays. We will have to keep an eye on Portland and Maine, too. We may have some slowdowns at the airports. Now, elsewhere, should be doing okay. As long as you don't have thunderstorms at the terminal, I think it won't be um, that bad of a day. In the south, we do have active weather right now with some showers not too far from Charleston up towards Myrtle Beach. We're still watching this old invest area. It uh, you know, still has a chance, Alex, of developing. Not, you know, not hugely likely, but influence her weather on the shore regardless. Yeah, absolutely. So been definitely um, a situation here. Not, not unexpected. We knew temperatures were going to be on the warm side. This is not untypical weather. So maybe a little above average. But we're going to see more temps in the 90s. The problem is that the dew points are up too. So you've got the heat index that's even higher than this. And that's what's affecting athletes. We've got temps that are going to be in the upper 80s Wednesday, Thursday. We hit 90s on Friday. And then we stay in the upper 80s here through the rest of the weekend into next week. In and out of showers and storms. The influence from the tropical storm. That's going to be today and tomorrow, but then beyond that, it's just the typical pop-up showers and storms. Till we get to Monday, then it becomes more likely. Alex? Who will be Doesn't taking you through the next hours. I don't drink it. I don't drink, drink it. Drink Alex. Good. Alex. I could care less. I'll care just be less. honest. I could care less. What, do, do why do you drink not coffee? drink it? I don't like the taste of it. I don't like the taste yeah. either. Yeah, don't like the taste. Just give me some OJ. Do you need any? I love the taste of it. Here's the question. Do you? It's Jen, my, it's Jen my, loves it. Yes. It's not even coffee. I can't even do with your milk. I can't even do that. Even like tiramisu, just how it's at like lightly. Yeah, you can't do it. Okay, real quick, Alex. Do you have to use an upper in the morning to get you up at all? No. No? No uppers. It's OJ. As you know, it's on my I I needs coffee. Monsters. Literally, no one needs it. I do it. think a glass Jam of water you. can, I like my coffee, but a glass of water, if you just drink water first yeah. thing. Yeah. All right, there you know, go. We got to move on. We got a show to do. All right. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> so we roll on until noon right here. Thanks so much for joining us here as we head on through our Tuesday. Uh, hopefully uh, you're picked up here. You got maybe your coffee cup and you're drinking. And <laughs> or your water or your OJ. Or whatever it is that you need. Uh, lots to track your forces as we head on through the day. So let's get right to it. So of course, we asked you our question. We've been talking about gardening here this week. Uh, so we asked, you know, how is your garden looking? You guys yeah. have been sending some great pictures here showing us. All right. So today we're focusing on eating some of that uh, 
uh, those veggies here from your garden here. Ash, we have a guest coming up at about 40 past the hour yeah. to talk a little bit more about yeah. uh, some of the best veggies here and what you do to uh, oh, kind of liven up the meals. Yeah, some great ideas actually for cooking with what's, you know, the produce of your backyard summer garden. We're asking you though, what's your favorite? Is it the tomato? Is it peppers? Is it corn? What's, and not the only spot either. So we've had some thunderstorms overnight in Wisconsin, Minnesota. It's your turn overnight tonight. We fast forward the clock, and this is tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Thunderstorms are lined up and ready to go, smashing into Minneapolis as we get through the morning hours. So you see these storms coming through. They honestly could be pretty nasty with some strong damaging winds. There's a possibility of severe weather, hail, as we get to into tomorrow morning. So that's the timing of it. Meanwhile, right now, we are dealing with thunderstorms out there. This is in Wisconsin, just south of La Crosse, Bergen, La Crosse, and Shelby. You've got a severe thunderstorm warning. There has been a history of some small hail coming out of these storms already. So we've been watching that for you. Also watching over around Oshkosh, where we've got some thunder and lightning and rain happening. The big Air Venture show is on this week. And I know after not having it last year, everyone is so excited to get everything underway. The weather definitely delaying things out there this morning. Now, possible thunderstorms today go severe. This is really for what's going to happen overnight tonight, although obviously we're, you know, keep an eye on things th this morning, but we got another round. Minneapolis, you saw what's coming your way tomorrow morning and through the day tomorrow, then we likely see severe weather on the move through Wisconsin, eventually dropping down into northern parts of Illinois and into Michigan as well. Yes, you've got more severe weather possible your way, coming your way by the day on Wednesday. Severe winds very likely, especially in Wisconsin tomorrow. We're going to watch that area. We honestly have all modes of severe weather possible wind, hail, and there is an isolated tornado risk. We've got a three on the Torcon um, for you tomorrow. This is in Wisconsin. So let's step it forward. We go back to Minneapolis tomorrow morning. You know the drill. You're getting up early because of thunderstorms. They come blasting east and a little bit south as we get you into the afternoon. So now come about one o'clock, uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Between then at four or so, more storms coming in, and it could be a couple multiple rounds of storms. Some of the nastier ones actually come in overnight Wednesday into Thursday here. These look pretty nasty on the forecast coming into lower Michigan while you're sleeping overnight Wednesday into Thursday. Meanwhile, Alex, the rain is nonstop in the south here. These storms just start moving when they right. set up. They develop and then they just sit, sit there. <laughs> it's crazy, right? And we, that's really nice. It really you is. You can't beat that for yeah, the past. Yeah, especially because not far away. Dew points will be in the 70s mm -hmm. and it'll be like ugh, mm -hmm. sticky. America's Morning Headquarters continues after this. We'll get you ready for the rest of the week and the weekend. All week long. Degrees higher, especially when you're in the sun. Mm -hmm. Well, electric fans yeah. might be needed. That's right. Could make you feel a little cooler, but they can actually increase your risk of having a heat-related illness or even dying from a heat stroke. Meteorologist Mark Elliott explains why and has more ways to keep you cool. Yeah, I mean, if you have that option, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we're going to be needing to put some of this into use here because really hot conditions are anticipated here for us uh, as we head through the remainder of the week. Big ridge of high pressure that's in place here for us. Underneath that ridge, you get that general sinking motion in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, it compresses and can heat up like that. Yeah. But, Jen, it's not just the heat. We've got a lot of moisture around. Yeah. So that combining the two... Yeah. I mean, this Oof. makes it worse. It's one thing to have high temperatures, but when you combine that with dew points that are up in the 70s, that feels like skyrockets. And we've got actually that concern for the high heat index all the way up into North Dakota, where you might not have the high dew points, but you actually have the really extreme temps, like 100 yeah. plus. And that's where we've got these alerts that are in place. Uh, portions of uh, uh, Montana dealing with excessive heat warnings. Then we've got the advisories. Those are the areas in that orange. That extending all the way into parts of the lower Mississippi Valley. Uh, so it's pretty widespread where we're talking about some of this heat. I bet you we'll see that expand in the south too in the coming oh, days yeah, as we yeah, see yeah. those numbers go up and mm -hmm. this is one of the most important graphics i feel like we can show you the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke i mean heat exhaustion obviously not fine you have to take caution and care for it, but heat stroke is deadly so there's a lot of differences too because when you have heat exhaustion you might be lightheaded compared to heat stroke when actually uh you might have a throbbing headache so mm -hmm. some differences feeling there yeah so you start talking about some of those heat stroke uh, signs that's time where uh, emergency yeah. medical is situation there, calling the ambulance, calling 911, because yeah. you're really uh, on the precipice of potentially dying in that situation. Right, and so certainly important for athletes, um, kids and adults here. A lot of kids are out at camps for the summer, but uh, Alex, you're telling us football training's about to start, too. That is training, yeah. yeah. We got all kinds of sporting activity, of course, going to the baseball game here, Phillies, and the Nationals going at it there, and Philly's going to be a warm, muggy time as we go work our way through this evening hour, so lots of sunshine beaming down. You're in the stands. Maybe you don't have the sheets in the shade and even in the shade, it's still going to be yeah. pretty nasty. Hydrated without 
beer. Oh, I know. I know it's hard to water. do, but yeah. water, water, water. All right, so we also have the Pirates home hosting the Brewers, and today we've got, you know, not a bad forecast, right? Temperature's going to be in the upper 80s, but because it is so humid, it's going to feel worse. It's toughest for the folks playing, but even tough if you're outside working and even just sitting in the sun. I know, you know, feel like you're not doing anything. You're still out there and dealing with the heat, and your body still has to process it. Absolutely. Of course, training camps uh, starting to open up here uh, for some of the NFL teams, and we're starting you off in the Atlanta flowery branches where they get it going. Uh, you can see the forecast for the day, keeping things on the quiet side here for us, but we could see an isolated storm or two getting through this evening. I know a lot of these camps, they open up the, some of the practices to the public, and that'll be happening over the coming uh, days. All right, Houston, oh, it's going to be in the 90s. It will be hot and humid. It'll be right down the water, right? You kind of feel helpless out there, yeah. but you do have that connection. Mm. All right, thanks so much for uh, sticking with us here on America's Morning Headquarters. Time of the show where we pick our cities of the uh, day. And why don't I start things off? Yeah, because I know you're excited. Yeah. Alex has been talking about this for weeks now, I feel like. That's right. Yeah. I mean, football fans, I think we all get excited for every little bit of football. So we're going to go to Richmond, Virginia. And things are moving pretty smoothly yes, in Richmond. They are. I mean, yeah, I right? Know, right? You just yeah. show up, get your vaccine. Might Ooh. even not even notice, right? Because you're watching the game <laughs> um, or watching the practice. All right, so I'm going to stay in the football theme and I decided to look at some high school football. So we're going out to California. Oh, this this yes. is uh, Newport Beach, California. A little, a little foggy, cloudy this mm. morning. Learn something new again yeah, today. There you go. All right. Um, the big deal that we have going on is all these storms, though, and rainbow chances coming in across the Northeast and Midwest. So we've got a couple of fronts. One comes east, another one, though, ready to go, sinking south, dropping down across the northern northern plains into the upper Midwest here. And that second one will, I think, bring uh, sort of quite a blast of weather with it. And also some cooler and drier air, too, behind it. And you'll see that in the Northeast. We keep getting these fronts, so we never really get the big heat that you're going to see elsewhere in the country this week or even the next two weeks. But we do get the storms. And so today it's possible severe weather with damaging winds, the most likely threat perhaps blasting right along that I-90 corridor. That's going to be the main threat area. This goes through tomorrow morning where we could see heavy rainfall too, and that could bring the threat of flooding or flash flooding. We also have another round of storms that's going to develop overnight tonight into tomorrow morning, and then that gives us a renewed threat for storms in Minnesota and again in La Crosse, Wisconsin, where I know it's stormy right now. We've got more coming our way actually into tomorrow too, and that extends into Michigan and even back down into parts of the Ohio Valley as we get through the day on Wednesday. So it's going to be a busy storm track here, Alex, with these fronts coming in across the week here. We're going to go from the yard to the kitchen to help you get out of the weeds with your diet. Mm, registered nutritionist with purelyplanted.com. Nicole Andrea joins us now to help us kind of spice up our recipes. Thanks so much for joining us, Nicole. We uh, certainly appreciate it. Now, it's not just the healthier lifestyle, uh, but why else are sort of the homegrown gardens are uh, really useful for, for us and our neighbors? She can't pick just one. <laughs> no, she she can't pick just she one. Loves them Nicole all. Dandrian, thank you so much. You know her. All this week, our ongoing series will showcase Americans doing what is right for the environment and their hometowns. Today, we introduce you to artist, scholar, and community organizer Lila June. She's using her voice to empower Indigenous youth and bring new leadership to climate policymaking. Remarkable young woman. Well, coming up tomorrow in our series, we're going to head to the Bahamas. The rainfall is actually with the monsoon that's been very active this year, the complete polar opposite of last year. Um, we've got more rain coming in the same spots that actually just picked up. This is where we've had the biggest rain over the past week. Arizona, I mean, coming in with inches of rain, more than five or six inches in some spots. Yeah, and that's the area that we're seeing some of the help in terms of the drought situation there. So we're probably going to see a little bit more help when the next drought monitor gets released uh, Thursday morning there for us. But more moisture, that continues to stream on in. So the good side of this is, again, we need the rain, but too much too quickly leads to the flood issues. Exactly. So we've got concerns, obviously, you know, in the areas that have already had a lot of rainfall the most simply because things are saturated. Streams and creeks um, have water in them, which is something that we can't say for last year. And we've been talking a lot about actually, you know, the concern with for folks who are out here camping or hiking and how mm -hmm. water and flash flooding can happen in areas where it may not even be raining. And that's a problem actually in the West quite often where you just get this runoff that can happen. So be cautious in all of these areas. Yeah, it can 
come up very quickly. So through tomorrow, you see the areas where we're concerned with flooding tomorrow into Thursday. Very similar locations where we'll be watching the threat for that to take place here for. So we need the rain again, but just watch for that flooding here. We'll certainly be tracking oh, yeah. the plan for Absolutely. changing climate and weather. Mm. Um, speaking of weather changing, all right, so it's been sort of a topsy turvy summer. We have not seen many days um, that have been that hot in the south compared to the north. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't know it, but uh, I wouldn't think it right. Boston, yeah. Philadelphia, look at the 90 and 95 plus days for those two cities compared to Atlanta and Birmingham. Yeah. Both of those spots in the south have yet to make it to 95. This week, this week, when you see the forecast, we're going to have a catch up, but we're going to come close. Um, but it has definitely been hotter in places like Boston and Philly so far this year. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, here we are in Atlanta. Here's that turnaround here for us uh, up near 90 today, and then there will be yeah. no problems getting into the 90s as we head right. towards the weekend. Hottest temperatures we've seen so far this summer. So we're going to have three days above 95 degrees here, or 95 or hotter at least, as we look at the upcoming forecast. Birmingham will do the same Thursday and Friday. We're going to flirt with 100. I mean, if you're going to be 98, you're like, <laughs> just well, go just for go it. for the century mark, right? Yeah. Someone's backyard thermometer will. <laughs> exactly. Meanwhile, Boston, again, it's the flip side of the other of this uh, story here for us. Pretty warm today, but you'll You'll notice as we head through the week, temperatures here barely getting up to 80 degrees. So, I mean, this is kind of where we should be, but it has been so hot in those areas in I parts mean, of the Northeast. Technically, it's a smidge below average. Yeah. So, yeah. it's the only spot in the country that really has this extended period of below average temperatures. Philly, I mean, right there with you, 88 degrees. That's the average right now, and that's where we'll be on Wednesday. And then after that, I mean, we're below that until through next week. So that's your cool spot. Meanwhile, we got our big ridge of high pressure right in the middle of the country this week. Really the big feature here for us that's going to keep things really hot, but also with this moisture that's around, humidity levels. Yeah. I mean, and so you combine like, the two and it's just it's brutal. This is beyond air that gives you a hug, beyond air you can wear. This is like air that gives you a shower when you step <laughs> outside because you're instantly sweating. That's going to drive the heat index up here to dangerous levels, actually. That's why all those heat alerts are up, heat watches and heat warnings. All right, well, let's get you to our fruit or veggies were taxed. Right. We, all right, so you can you can add in fruit or vegetable, no matter what you want to pick. So exactly. go ahead, write go it in. Go for it. Do, do what it you right have to do. Yeah. All right, let's work our way through the next few days. Uh, the weekend, not too far away. At least I like to tell myself that, <laughs> even though it is Tuesday. And what we're finding ourselves dealing with, hopefully. Yeah, we it's me. It's there we me, go. Yeah. <laughs> Some showers and storms. Yet again, impacting us in parts of the south. And I'll tell you, Jen, these storms have flared up. They just dump a lot of rain yeah. really quickly. Oh, and you know what? They sit there, too, and they don't move. Mm -hmm. So last night, that was the case for a lot of storms in the south. Um, but the next couple of days, you're going to be like, oh, wait, where's those afternoon storms? Without them, it's going to get hot. Yeah. So, yeah, there's the uh, flip side here. Yeah, you dry out, but now things are getting yeah. hotter. Dallas flirting with the triple digits here for you. Uh, that's going to be what you deal with here heading through this week. A lot of triples. Uh, that's what we'll find there in the middle of the country. Yeah, we're listening to, uh, to save it for a rainy day. So if you need that, I mean, there's very few places that will have a rainy day getting into the end of the week. Friday, maybe northern parts of New England, but Saturday looks great. So oh, I'm yeah. just almost thinking about how I can make my way up into a pot spot like New York. Yeah. 81 degrees on Sunday. Enjoy that. But now we're seeing more rain showers and storms. But look, temperatures yeah. are back yeah. down a bit yeah. with this rain showers and storms. I mean, we'll be right back after the break here on America's Morning Headquarters. It has to be, right? I think so. Good catch, though. All right, America's Morning Headquarters are rolling on here for us until noon. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Today, we're still talking about gardening. In fact, all week, we've got something really cool each day lined up for you. Today, we're just chatting about ways to use all those vegetables in your garden. Um, are you getting any rain in your garden? Let's take a look at that. Wonderful out there. Of course, we want to recap our poll question from yesterday as we've been uh, focusing in on gardening. And we asked you, you know, how is your garden looking? And you've been supplying us with some... Really? Is that and, a thing in New Jersey? Uh, yes. Oh, the Garden State? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, but we're, we're wondering now, we want you to vote on what is your favorite vegetable or fruit. <laughs> That's yes, fine too. either way, yes. Yeah. Whatever your garden that you want to share, share with us. Uh, well, this morning on America's Morning Headquarters, summer storms scatter across the country in just two minutes when parts of the Midwest need to be on alert for extreme winds, large hail, and even tornadoes. Plus, more than 100 million people will have heat indices above 100 this week in six minutes. We'll show you how hot it can get inside your car in just a matter of 10 minutes, by the way. And our Faces of Change series continues at 20 past how one songwriter is bringing new leadership 
to climate policy making. Well, welcome into America's Morning Headquarters on this Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams, alongside meteorologist Jim Cantori and Jordan Seal. We want to kick off your day with a look at some of the storms that we saw yesterday that could present themselves again today. Severe storms rolling through Shenandoah Valley on Monday. Look at this here. A nice little time lapse. You can see uh, the clouds, some showers off in the distance. And some rotation leading to turbulent skies over the Old Dominion. Lots of reports of trees down from Blacksburgs um, up into Staunton. And in D.C., at least 100 trees reported down across the city. So let's focus in first on the storms in the south. Jim, we're going to have a couple regions where we're going to have storms today, actually. Yeah. So let's look at the overall pattern here. And notice we have a ridge. You have everything going up and over this ridge. And then we have our trough dipping down. Within that trough is where you're going to look for some of that active weather. And notice we have this big explosion of thunderstorms over Wisconsin right now. Uh, basically, what's left of our MCS is going to continue to move into the northeast and could help spark off some storms. So where do we have the worst weather right now? Definitely Wisconsin getting hit hard and actually over um, leaving Michigan and the thumb of Michigan moving over into Canada. But Stanley, Medford, Stevens Point in Wisconsin crossing over 39 to Green Bay, Appleton, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And with all that lighting, with all the wind associated with this. We have over 53,000 customers without power in Wisconsin and over 34,000 without power in Michigan. So there's a look at what we're going to see through the day today. Everything's going to be moving eastbound though. So that's the good news. Things will be emptying out there um, out of Minnesota and Wisconsin, and it's really going to be focused here mainly as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. And in the Northeast, that's where we will see the storms fire up from Buffalo to Syracuse around the Finger Lakes. By the way, these are the Finger Lakes. They look like fingers. These were made by glaciers way back in the day. Random fun fact for you. And there are your storms coming on through here as we head into the afternoon hours. And because of the setup that we have, it's basically west winds, you know, throughout a big chunk of the atmosphere. So it looks like damaging winds could be an issue with this. So Jim, maybe more power lines down and trees down for some. Yeah. Not, we, now into the south and talk about this heat. It has been exhausting. It is sweltering. And by the way, uh, these are our highs, but who cares what it says on the high? All that matters is what it feels like to you, and that's the heat index. Here's where we have heat advisories, and you know it's hot when. New Orleans is always hot. So if they have a heat advisory, you know it's hot. Birmingham, Montgomery, Macon, you know these areas. Jackson, Mississippi, it's always just hot. So if there's a heat advisory, you know it's exceptional. So let's talk about why. Dew point temperatures are up there in the 70s across the board. Everyone is feeling that humidity and look at our temperatures. It's going to feel above 100. And what's interesting is I was, I was doing some quick research this morning on where this whole heat index came from, like when it came about. There are reports this came about in the 1900s, but it really was adopted, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s. But I saw a word that I'd never heard before, uh, humature. And I was like, you know what? I like that. Have you guys ever heard humature? Mm -mm. But I like it. Humidity and temperature. Jim's scowling. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I like the combination of those two words. So I think instead of calling it the heat index, I like humature. I think that's a fun word, and it's a good word to really describe what's happening. But we're talking triple digits from Florida all the way, really, not only in the south, Jim. This is where I'm focused now. But this is extensive all the way up to the Canadian border. Uh, in, in Florida. Don't forget about Florida. <laughs> Okay. It's time for our week-long series, Faces of Change, and we are showing you people who are inspiring others to step up and join the battle to rescue planet Earth from climate change. Yeah, and today meet a Ph.D. scholar with a guitar. Lila June is using her voice to empower indigenous youth and bring new leadership to climate policy making. That was so beautiful. Indigenous tribes are especially vulnerable to the impact of climate change because their deep ties to the land and reliance on fishing and hunting. Tribal leaders from across North America came together in Seattle last October for a climate summit to chart a path moving forward. All right, let's get to... Well, we've got blistering Midsummer's Day ahead for people in the middle of the country, and you're going to be just in a puddle of sweat. Great. Heat indices... <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere from 100 to 110. It's hard. We're doing this, you know, water challenge right now, but it's so warm that, like, 
I got a shower like twice a day at least. You shower three times twice a, a day. day. What? Well, you get so hot. Like I was outside yesterday with the kids, uh -oh. and in five minutes I'm dripping. You're gonna oh, be out of this. He's not gonna make the finals. Yeah, exactly. I haven't. No, I'm saying I haven't. I haven't showered because we're trying to conserve water. <laughs> but then my family has to live with it. You know, it's not the best. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, let's talk about places where it's gonna be very, very hot. Everywhere. Okay, mostly everywhere. Um, you know, just taking a look at the map here, the heat indices are rocking for some of you, feeling like the triple digits. Des Moines, you're on the map as well, Twin Cities. But uh, you guys can leave the heat behind. Enjoy a more reasonably July temperature with just a short drive. Yeah, here you go. You have Minneapolis, uh, I-35 northbound to Duluth. 130-mile drive, you shave 17 degrees off. There you go. By the way, the water temperature here in Superior, right around Duluth, 67.5 degrees. See, so instead of showering, I need to just jump in the lake, lake jump in the body of water. Yeah. Yeah, For something go. a little That'll closer to home, too. drive north from the Twin Cities to uh, Millax Lake. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, I believe I am. You guys are going to enjoy a high of 81 instead of 94, so that's doable as yeah. well. It's only a 20-mile trip to escape the 98-degree heat in Des Moines today as well, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But first, what we want to do is head over to Jim and talk more about how this heat, Jim, is not only in the upper Midwest, in the plains, it's overtaking everything everything I feel like intake the heat and neither can our farmers. It's heat week here on America's morning headquarters. We'll show you how farmers are coping with conditions that are threatening their crops and what it means for the food on your table. That's at 40 past. And it's time now for your in and out forecast where you should plan indoor activities and outdoor activities. Charlotte, by the way, isolated storms and hot. Uh, they have a barefoot archery. They just call it that. I don't think you're barefoot. So you can channel your inner kitness there or outdoor archery here. We've got America's Morning Headquarters and while construction workers, landscapers, other people that work outdoors deal with the heat and humidity, the combination is actually worse for farmers. And we're going to explain why that is exactly. Yeah, to help us understand the latest challenges facing farmers in the Midwest uh, is Iowa corn and soybean farmer Kelly Newenhouse. Thanks for joining us this morning, Kelly. Uh, a process called evapotranspiration, which I'm very sure that you're familiar with, the loss of water through the soil and the plant evaporation will combine with the current heat and humidity that's already out there to make it feel even hotter. Explain how much hotter it gets in the field versus, let's say, a city. Yeah, that, that extra humidity does make it a little. Uh, we appreciate that very much from Primgar, Iowa, the uh, heart and soul of Northwestern Iowa. We appreciate you talking to us this morning. And again, Steph, another farmer who's doing these new practices, yeah. you know, to help. Uh, a little regenerative farming maybe regenerative farming, uh, tucked in the there, soil. right? Well, Hopefully the middle of the country you. is stuck in some of the Ooh, Some of these other areas the because of the high dew point. So if your dew point is sitting around 75, 76 degrees. You can't degrees, get lower than it. You can't get lower than that. Your heat index is going to stay up yeah. all night. That's always a good indication. When you see that dew point, That's you're not going to get lower than that. So keep that in mind. Let's have a look at the tropics here. And things are pretty quiet overall. We do have some action in the East Pack, a couple areas to watch here, and an invest as well. This is what's left of our system. I'm now really 0% chance of this developing of the invest that we had here off the southeast coast interaction with land is just not going to allow this to develop. You can still kind of see an overall broad counterclockwise flow. So you have that area of low pressure. Uh, remember, energy can't be created or destroyed, but it's just not going to spin up into everything. Over the past 48 hours, we did have some of that rain just south here of the Jacksonville area and scattered storms elsewhere. But out in the MDR, you look and all is pretty quiet here. We don't have a whole lot going on. We still have that dust that's coming off Africa and instead of dust, you know, we're looking for little waves to start coming off of Africa and looking like this, but it's just too hard with the dry air that's in place for us here. So as we look uh, over time, not a whole lot happening, but remember Hurricane Andrew, that developed and made landfall. It made landfall in August and that was one of the waves that came off of uh, of Africa there. And then we are watching, of course, uh, this tropical storm that is affecting Japan and changing um, some plans for some people here, Jordan.